Today we're going to talk about cells, tissues, and microscopy part two. We'll preview ultrastructural features of the cells, that is the organelles within the cells. Uh, we will talk about the cells, tissues, uh, and tissues make organs, organs make organ systems, and so the body is composed of organ systems. We'll talk a little bit about light and electron microscopy, how a cell fits in the universe, uh, and how to prepare specimens to be able to see uh, cells. Uh, and uh, also we will uh, summarize the uh, ultrastructural characteristics uh, of the cell. We'll go through the different organelles, the Ruffi or the Golgi, uh, mitochondria, nucleus, uh, nuclear membranes, plasma membrane, and different components of organelles of the cell which make possible uh, their role in being the smallest unit of protoplasm uh, and that is of life. When a doctor treats you, he doesn't treat you, he treats your cells. So those are the cells of treatment, those are the units of life, and we want to look at the details therein. Thank you. Introduction to Cells, Tissues, and Microscopy, Part 2. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I am a professor at Texas A&M University in the College of Veterinary Medicine, and today we're going to talk about uh, the introduction to cells, tissues, and microscopy. We want to uh, preview the cell ultrastructure. Uh, we want to preview cells, tissues, and organs, overview of light and electron microscopy, preparation of specimens for types of vision, ultrastructure features of cells and organ, or organelles. So if we look at living substance, it's known as protoplasm. The smallest unit of protoplasm is a cell. Uh, some animals only have a single cell. So the cell is the single element or, or unit of life. Tissues are groups of cells with the same general function or texture. Uh, muscle, nerve, connective tissue, epithelium, those are tissues. Uh, more than two or more types of tissues makes an organ, skin, kidney, liver, blood vessels, and groups of organs make organ systems, the respiratory, digestive, reproductive, nervous systems. And so here we see a cell, a cell here, and this is a cell, there's this nucleus and various organelles, and today we're going to talk about the various organelles. Uh, this is, micro, this is a, uh, the essential made of microtubules. Uh, we have a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, series of vesicles, a rough endoplasmic reticulum, rough by ribosomes. The Golgi apparatus looks like pancakes with a lot of vesicles pinching off. Uh, the cell membrane, mitochondrion, which is a double membrane uh, in port for making ATP. Uh, inclusions, lipid is one of those inclusions. Uh, a lysosome is another uh, enzyme containing structure, uh, membrane bound, uh, that uh, uh, is involved in, in uh, remodeling cells. So uh, a cell is a unit of life, a unit of protoplasm, uh, groups of cells make tissue, uh, tissues uh, get together make organs, and organs make organ systems. So there's four basic types of tissue. We've got epithelium that covers things. Connective tissue connects things, muscle tissue contract and move things, and nervous tissue is for uh, communication. So if we start with epithelium, it covers organs, lines, viscera, blood vessels, and it's the secretory cells of glands. So lining your um, uh, circulatory system, uh, lining the outside of your cavity, lining your digestive tract and organs, all that is epithelium. Connective tissue is a histologic glue. It holds things together. We see some fat cells here. Here's this nucleus, and there's the fat droplet inside the cell, fibroblastic type cells. They bind things together. They organize uh, things, uh, and specialized connective tissue is blood, cartilage, and bone. And blood cells, and we see them, there's different types. The red blood cells that involve the oxygen and carbon dioxide transport, and they're largely by concave. Um, white cells, which you see here blue uh, cells, 
they uh, defend uh, the body against uh, pathogens. Uh, and there's platelets. Here we see some platelets. There's some over here that have to do with clotting blood. They nucleated. It has no nucleus, just a, a piece of a cytoplasm, but it acts kind of like a cell. Here we see the red blood cells, the biconcave disc, red blood cells here, and neutrophils, uh, a monocyte, which gives rise to macrophage, lymphocytes, uh, eosinophils, and basophils. And here we can see in these body wearable specimens, this individual is 120 pounds uh, versus 300 pound individuals. You can see there's a lot of fat uh, located uh, in uh, the skin uh, of this individual, which is an organ. So we have fat, you can see the back fat here. Uh, we also have muscle, that's the pink that we see in through here is a, uh, so connective tissue is one of those uh, four basic type of tissue and muscle. And muscle, it generates contractile force. That's what it happens. Uh, and here we can see where in the body where also the, the muscle has walked out of the skeleton. And that brings us to muscle, just a skeletal muscle. And another type of muscle is smooth muscle that we see here in the digestive tract. And in between the layers, we see nerve cells. Here's a nucleus and a nucleolus uh, and cytoplasm around here of nerves. So we've got smooth muscle and nervous tissue. And that brings us to another type of tissue, uh, the nervous tissue. And there's different types of, of uh, nerve cells. We see a nerve cell body here. There's a nucleus and a nucleolus and a initial substance uh, in this ganglion cell. So they have electrical pulses that, that uh, transmit uh, for the contraction of muscle to, uh, to uh, feeling of pain, uh, different things uh, that, the, that it does. So if we look at the four basic types of tissue in this skull, uh, we would see epitheliums in the eye, of course, epithelium lines your nose, epitheliums in your skin, and epithelium lines cavities. That's what epithelium does. It lines things, and it does it because it has junctions between adjacent cells, and those junctions uh, allow cells to hold hands, and they form, uh, form a cavity. Connective tissue, of course, we have connective tissue in the skull. We have connective tissue uh, in the nose supporting things. We have uh, bone uh, or um, the, the fat or connective tissue in your chin and of course we already mentioned the fat is connective tissue muscle of course muscle in your neck and in your in your jaw uh, muscle in the eye uh, nervous tissue of course the brain uh, and the eye also have nervous tissue in it um, there's nervous tissue in your skin that's how you can feel things and uh, there's spinal um, cord uh, nerves. So if we take a look at the eye, uh, we can see some of the uh, images that that we uh, are, are seeing. Uh, and so uh, this is the eye. You can see the lens uh, and lining uh, this cavity uh, here. Lining uh, the surface would be uh, epithelium, and also lining this cavity here. Is, epi is epithelium, is actually is the endothelium, it's a certain type of epithelium uh, known as endothelium. Uh, we also have uh, epithelium on this side. Uh, you see the epithelial cells through, through there. In fact, the whole lens is composed uh, of uh, epithelial, epithelial cells that we were seeing. Uh, and we can look at the, uh, the esophagus, take a look at that right quick. Uh, here's the esophagus, and we see stratified squamous epithelium lining the esophagus uh, in through there uh, and on the outside. Here we see it lining the trachea uh, as well. Uh, so epithelium uh, aligns things. Uh, and if we look at a little finger uh, from a little fetal finger, uh, we can see the epithelium lines the outside of the finger. Uh, epithelium uh, also uh, lines blood vessels that are there. These are endothelial cells, a type of, of epithelium. Uh, here are this uh, little arteriole here, a little venous. Uh, here you can see the white blood cells and the red blood cells in this connective, in this connective tissue. 
And so, uh, uh, also there's nervous, uh, there's a lymphoidal tissue throughout the body, and there's certain places in the that you have lymphoidal organs, uh, like the lymph node uh, is one place. But lymphoidal tissue is throughout the body, you'll be able to see that. Also, there's different types of blood vessels to accommodate the different functions. Regardless of the type of blood vessel, the arteriole, the capillary, or the venial, you have endothelial cells lining the lumen. And the, uh, the size of the lumen varies, as you can see, and what's in the wall varies. A lot of muscle in the arterial side, <coughs> no muscle uh, in the capillaries, and then you can pick up some muscle uh, in the larger veins. And also, wherever you have blood vessels, normally you have draining lymphatics to re return the fluid that might leak out with edema, uh, return that back to the bloodstream. So if we take a look at some of those, this is a spermatic cord uh, that we can see, and this is uh, just some vessels that we see in the spermatic cord. Here's some nerves in the cord, uh, but uh, this is an artery that's in the, in the cord and more nerves that we see. Another uh, arteriole at uh, there, another arteriole there. Uh, and you should be able to see some, uh, 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 this is fat cells here, arteriole nerve, uh, arterial vein that we see there. Usually wherever you see a or artery, there's a, there's a vein uh, pretty close uh, by it. And also we can see lymphatics and the endothelial cells also line, uh, line the lymphatics uh, as well. So uh, if we look at the uh, uh, bile duct, uh, this, is the, this is the bile duct here. Uh, this is a, a vein, this is a, a portal vein, hepatic portal vein. And we can see that there's circular muscle in this large vein, but there's also longitudinal muscle. But you still have endothelial cells aligning it through there. So we have muscle, uh, we have connective tissue. Uh, these are fibroblasts of connective tissue. So a blood vessel would have an intima, uh, which is certainly at least endothelial cells, media, uh, and the avian tissue. So muscle, and then here is a uh, the, um, the bile duct, you can see that has different type of epithelium on the surface. Uh, it has a simple columnar epithelium. These are plasma cells that produce antibodies. These are fibroblasts uh, that, that, that we see here. Um, and then if we looked at the, um, the uh, human uterus, and we can look at that right quick, uh, we can see uh, glands that are there, and again, that's epithelium, uh, and we see uh, lots of, of, of uh, lymphatic uh, cells uh, in through there, which is quite often uh, we can see that, but a lot of fibroblasts uh, in through there, uh, and we also see muscle. So this is smooth muscle. We can see the fibers of the, uh, the, the, the pink is the uh, actin and myosin, and then the blue uh, are the um, uh, uh, the nuclei, and these are longitudinal views, and these are cross-sectional views. And so the nucleus is in the pretty much in the middle uh, of the uh, of the cell. So in terms of microscopy, there's different types. We look at it with a microscope, but the specimen here have a condenser which condenses the light uh, in through there. We focus. It and we move the stage is pretty much what it is. Now there's a difference in magnification resolution. Resolution, what we're really concerned is the smallest distance between two points that can be distinguished. That's what resolution is, and it varies. It's nanometers for electron microscopy. In other words, you can see very small things. Uh, it's micrometers for light microscopy, and it's millimeters for, for us. So it's about a thousand fold between our eye and light microscope and another thousand fold to electron microscopy. Tissue uh, needs to be uh, fixed or preserved and it will, uh, it will deteriorate if it's not. So you have a fixative that preserves it. It needs to be rigid 
uh, in order to section it, to cut it thin, uh, like uh, you can cut a, a hard ball egg very thin, but if it's not hard ball, it won't cut at all. Uh, and that's what you have to do to tissue when you do that with paraffin or plastic. And so those are the different stages that you have. And then you stain things, and staining allows certain things to be um, evident and other things to be less evident or a different color. And so you can use different types of stains. Periodic acid shift is one of the stains that you see that stains carbohydrates. And here in this uh, piece of kidney, we see the proximal tubule a brush border is PAS positive. In other words, it has lots of sugars on it. Uh, the basement membrane uh, uh, in the glomerulus uh, has a lot of sugars associated with it. You can't see the sugars in this dilutant in blue, but you can see the goblet cells, intestinal absorptive cells, and muscle cells. Um, and uh, this H&E preparation, uh, again, uh, you can see the nucleus and the um, uh, and the cytoplasm of the cells, and you can see the different shapes of, of cells. So uh, those are PAS, uh, HND, tolutin and blue. Uh, and uh, for tolutin and blue, everything is one color, so you have to look at shape, size, and intensity of things. So uh, if you look at light microscopy versus electron microscopy, uh, because the resolution is much better, you can see more detail. So like uh, this is an endothelial cell, which is like that cell there. Uh, and this is a podocyte, which is like this cell. So we can see details of these cells and how they interact with these. And here we can see a blood vessel. There's the same, same lumen there as here, uh, except you can see there's actually a fenestra in there. You can see details. Here's a, a piece of stomach uh, with tolutin in blue. Uh, uh, you can see the uh, mitochondria and things, but here with the PAS stain, you can see a surface mucus cells, mucus neck cells, so you can identify cells which are rich in carbohydrates. Uh, this is tolutin in blue. Uh, you can see uh, the uh, what we saw with the PAS stain uh, is droplets that we see there, which is the surface mucus cells. Uh, and there's a uh, different, we'll mostly look at stains tissue with bright microscopy, but there's other types of microscopy uh, that will allow you to see live cells. So with uh, tolutin and blue, we can see these columnar type cells, simple columnar cells that's in the intestines. We can see these rods, which are mitochondria. You can see a thick uh, structure in through there, which is a striated brush border. Is a brush border you threw there. We can see junctions here at electron microscopy that we see just as terminal bars in through there. So uh, by using electron microscopy, we can supplement what the detail that we can see with light microscopy. Also epithelium uh, is sperm is another one. We can see the nucleus of a sperm, we can see the tail, and we can see uh, the axoneme with little dining arms that are located in, in, in the sperm tail. Uh, also with microscopy, you can use immunofluorescence, namely that you can uh, label something with a fluorescent tag, uh, and if it binds to that, then you're able to visualize the fluorescent tag. So it's like uh, you can get uh, put the cowboys in a group, let them all have white hats, and then you can identify the cowboys by the white hats is some of the uh, methods that we have. And here you see I have a fluorescent probe I add to an antibody, hence immunofluorescence, and it binds to an antigen or a structure that it wants to identify. And so here you can see where the structure is identified now by this fluorescence. And you can do that with peroxidase or you can have gold particles, have different size gold particles. And this is important for electron microscopy, these two are important for light microscopy. Auto uh, radiography, so if you, fee if you bake a cake and you use a radioactive sugar, then the cake will be radioactive. And the same with cells, if you feed the cell something that goes in a certain structure as a precursor and it's radioactive, it will be radioactive in that, in that structure. And here we see some secretory granules that were fed radioactive amino acids uh, and indeed those amino acids show up in the vesicle uh, that's associated with producing the protein. Uh, carbon replica 
is another way of visualizing cell. This is a typical transmission EM. Carbon replica, you're actually just looking at the replica. You're not looking at the tissue itself. And that is where you blew in carbon in through there and uh, carbon will uh, fill up on one side, not the other side. So it gives you different shades of it. Like here we can hardly see the nuclear pores, but there you can see nuclear pores very nicely in the carbon replica. Now, how do cells get its name? Well, the cells were in a cork. Uh, the first uh, cells that were observed were cork. Uh, and so um, the person who observed those called them a cell because of the cella or tiny rooms that the, the, the monks used to live in. And so it says like a cell. Of course, we now say a jail cell. Uh, but um, uh, the cell uh, and then uh, they so the first cell was seen like little boxes you could see how it looked like little jail cells here or little rooms that monks might live in uh, but then they discovered that plants have cells too they're not shaped like little boxes but they have cells and they have a nucleus just like this it's a nucleus and they had various organelles inside you got the Golgi apparatus you got the mitochondria rough in the plasma particular now, if we look at a cell, here's a cell here. Cell is not as big as a universe. Here's a galaxy here, and there's a whole universe. Here's a Milky Way galaxy. You can see a cell is smaller. And you can see a cell here. A cell is not as, uh, as big as a person, but it's much bigger than DNA. It's much bigger uh, than viruses or atoms, for example. And here we can see what you can see. With electron microscopy, you can see uh, a cell all the way to the atom. With, with light microscopy, you can see mitochondria, you can see eggs. Uh, and with an unaided eye, of course, we can see a person. You might be able to see frog eggs. Uh, it all depends upon which one it is. Certainly, see a chicken egg. And so different types of microscopy due to the different resolution allow you to see uh, uh, different structures and smaller and smaller structures could be seen by electron uh, microscopy. And so the same cell that we saw before, a simple columnar epithelial uh, cell, uh, uh, a similar type uh, simple columnar cell could be seen here. This happened to be an intestine that's in stomach, but both of them are simple uh, columnar cells. <coughs> so cells contain organelles, like the body contains organs. So organs in a cell is like uh, organs uh, in the human body, organelles in cells, that is. And so if we look at the various organelles, we see the nucleus, we see nuclear pores or DNA inside there, the Golgi apparatus here in green, mitochondria, we see the plasma membrane, the nuclear membrane, uh, we see rough in the plasma reticulum are some of the organelles. And so we start with the cell membrane uh, the cell membrane is the gatekeeper. It marks the limit of a cell and it separates a cell from its environment. And here we can see where two cells have just divided and they're separated by their plasma membrane. And here we can see on the intestinal absorptive cells where the plasma membrane is pushed up uh, by these uh, actin filaments that in, inside there uh, and the plasma membrane separates um, the cell from its environment. Okay, also we have the nucleus. Nucleus, like a computer of a cell, is the archive of a cell. It has the information. Uh, one uh, cell has all the information to do all the functions of all the cells in the body. It just which is expressed. Uh, and here we see the nucleus, nucleolus, these are mitochondria in through there. It's the archive of the cell. Also, we have mitochondria that produces ATP, produces energy. It's your energy production. And we see a mitochondria double membrane structure there with Christian through there associated with making energy. And then we have um, the construction team. That is uh, the rough in the plasma reticulum. Also, the smooth in the plasma reticulum is associated with uh, detoxification. So you see rough ER, you have these uh, kind of lamellar structures in through there, uh, and then we see ribosomes on the surface to make it rough. And it's rough, ribosomes uh, uh, is the one that makes protein 
uh, from the messenger RNA in a transfer uh, RNA. And then we have smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the liver to detoxify the thing. So there are different types of endoplasmic reticulum. Some is rough with ribosomes, some is smooth without ribosomes. And then we have the Golgi apparatus. It modifies and adds sugars, it packages things. So it's a packaging uh, department. And here we see the Golgi apparatus looks like a series of pancakes that have been cut. Uh, and you would be a, a lots of vesicles as these vesicles transcend one region, then another region, then another region, and then to go out after uh, the enzymes have modified uh, the proteins that are inside there. So if we look at animal cell, here's animal cell here, you see the nucleus, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, uh, centrioles, we see microtubules, um, actin filaments, uh, mitochondria, we see all of these are in these uh, and these animal cells, but uh, those some are the same ones are in plant cells as well. For example, each one of them has a double membrane that is a, a, a trilaminar structure uh, of the membrane. You've got two uh, heads and then the tail structure of the, uh, uh, it's a phospholipid bilayer is what, is what we have. In this case, it's inside uh, uh, the, um, the there is a, a cell coat and after that coat uh, you have cell wall you might say then there's a, 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 a cell membrane and the cell membrane is a double lipid a layer of phospholipid it controls the flow of water it masks the outer limits of the cell separates the cell from its environment both animal and plant cells have a double uh, membrane in the nucleus so the nucleus has a double membrane structure that we see around there. Uh, it houses the DNA uh, to tell the cell what to do and how to direct its ribosomes. And here we can see how mitochondria might have been a prokaryotic cell um, uh, that uh, that uh, the, the DNA uh, was enfolded from the plasma membrane and got encircled around it uh, in the in a eukaryotic cell, a prokaryotic cell is one that doesn't have a nucleus. A eukaryotic cell has a nucleus, uh, and the enfolding of the plasma membrane might have facilitated this double membrane uh, that we see in both uh, plants and animals. And so, to make energy, uh, we need mitochondria. We have them both in plants and animals. They have different shapes, and we can see a double membrane. And in this case, the prokaryotic cell. Uh, um, itself might have got involved in a, in a eukaryotic cell and become the mitochondria. Uh, and so there's some evidence of that because uh, the mitochondria is the only organelle other than the nucleus that has DNA. So uh, the cell itself might have brought in the DNA uh, that it has and also the DNA is circular which is characteristic of DNA uh, in bacteria. So uh, the membrane-bound sacs that we have, the vacuoles that we uh, have um, uh, in, in, in mammals for intracellular digestion, release of things, uh, generally smaller in animal cells than they are plant cells. In plant cells, a big vacuole is associated with, uh, with rigidity uh, of the plant. Here we can see small vacuoles, uh, are, which are part of a secretory process of pancreatic aster cell. Uh, also cytoskeletal components, you have a centriol. A centriol is associated with uh, organizing microtubules and pull chromosome apart. Plants do not have centrioles. And here we see a uh, centriol is, is nine sets of triplet uh, microtubules. Uh, and that's what makes your centriol, which organizes things uh, as, we, as we say. In fact, here you can see uh, uh, some uh, labile microtubules readying, uh, readying away from the centriole. Uh, and vacuoles, uh, uh, lysosomes, lysosomes necessary for intracellular digestion of things, uh, white blood cells, a lot of things have uh, lysosomes that are involved in there. Here we see some lysosomes uh, degradation. If you think about how a tadpole has to lose its tail, and then gain legs 
uh, and loosening of the tail part uh, is involved in lysosomal digestion. So uh, cells composed of three major classes. One is membranous organelles. Those are associated with mem membranes, and usually these are common structures essential for the cell. It's essential for metabolic function, cell membrane, limits the cell. Rough ER uh, is, makes things. Smooth ER detoxifies things. Golgi packages things. Mitochondria provides energies and lysosome for remodeling. And then there's those that are not associated with, with membranes, non membranous organelles, cytoskeletal components, microtubules, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, free ribosomes. And then there's another group, uh, inclusions. We include those, they're expendables, need not be there for the life of the cell. Nutrients could be glycogen or lipid, need not be there, but uh, it's important for cell function, but not cell life. Pigment, melanin granules, for example, in skin. Secretory granules, zymogen granules in the pancreas are examples of these. So in summary, we want to talk, we want to talk about little ultrastructure things, what makes up cells, uh, what are the organelles inside cells. And, and remember that when a doctor treats you, he doesn't treat you, he treats your cells. It's the cells, the unit of life. And here we see Castle Rock at Big Bend National Forest. Thank you.